Hey guys, welcome to the show, My Fence Life Live. I'm Cannon, and tonight we've got Rachel with us. Uh, Dan, he had to, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got some chips beside me. Um, anyways, hey Dan, he had to take the and night I off. Rachel with us. Is your audio on over there? Yeah, I turned it off. <laughs> right, cool. So tonight, uh, yeah, it's just Rachel and I. Uh, we're going to hang out, hopefully field some questions. Uh, Rachel's going to share her fence story with us. And, of course, we're probably talking about my salesman. How's that sound, Rachel? Probably. Yep, that sounds all right. Yeah, definitely can uh, handle some questions about my salesman. <laughs> so, Rachel, you're a busy gal. I and, am. And uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come on and and chat with us. I told Rachel earlier, guys, I was like, hey, you're like breaking some ground here. You're the first female and I'm a little nervous. Um, so this is going down in the record books. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so, <laughs> hey, fence guys, we're always a little rough uh, around the edges. So it, it's nice. That's what I was uh, told when I uh, was kind of thrusted into the fence industry. Yeah. Gotta watch out for fence guys. So it's a pleasant surprise, and 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 guys, Dan, he's had a really rough day. So uh, uh, I think he told me I, it's okay to talk about. But one of his crews got into an accident uh, early this morning in a truck. Uh, it's about nine o'clock this morning, and he has a total truck and a couple guys that are okay, uh, but do have minor injuries. So if you can imagine, that's that that complicates a day. So he's. He's had a whole day full of that. He's trying to figure out tomorrow, trying to figure out the rest of the week, you know, trying to take care of his team. Um, I talked to Dan about it and he told me what he plans to do. And, 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 you know, bottom line, his answer was, well, I'm, I'm going to take care of my guys, you know, and however much time this takes to figure out, that's what we'll do. So, yeah, well, he um, should be, <laughs> yeah. should be with his, his guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Rachel, we all know you as the face of my salesman. I I am. So uh, I get the pleasure of uh, um, inviting myself into people's offices every day. Um, same kind of uh, videoing, training, how to use my salesman. I've been doing this since 2017. Um, it was a pretty big transition from what I went to school for. Um, Cannon kind of pointed out behind him, this is the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, um, uh -oh. where I went to college, go go Corsairs, so um, not doing so good in these years, but when I was there, they were national champions. But anyway, uh, I, I went to university, and I went to school for education, so that was my background. Um, before I came to my salesman, I was actually teaching in a ministry, uh, preschool children, so um, so it was a far, far cry from what uh, what my salesman is very different um, from what I did before. During, um, I think it was 2013, we had some good friends of ours, Matt and Melanie Warner, had us over to dinner one night, uh, or, or drinks. Matt was saying, oh my gosh, you know, I have this really cool idea. Um, you got to check it out. So he probably pulled out his dry erase board or something that he could write on and was like, literally writing down, hey, you know, I just want um, to know my customers to get some information and to shop online for a fence, and, and, I, and I'm tired of going on tire kickers, and my husband and I were like, that's an amazing idea. We are not in the fence industry at all, but that's, that's great. So then um, about a year later, my husband and I were actually on vacation, and we called for Matt Warner, and he said, hey, we're gonna go down to Florida, um, to Orlando to this big fin show called Fence Tech. I believe it was 2014. And he's like, you guys want to come along? And my husband and I kind of look at each other like, we have to talk to people, <laughs> like people we don't know. Okay, well, that's something we have to think about. Um, Matt's like, oh, it's going to be so much fun. So we'd love to have you. Um, but if, if it's something that you want to do, you know, we're not going to work you into it. So. Anyway, we uh, we ended up going to Fence Tech in 2014, and you know we were in our my salesman booth, you know, sweating and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, you can't get out of your booth, you can't go out and talk to people, you know, like, hey, come and talk to us. You guys got a residential fence company, you know, kind of real shy, but uh, 
it was uh it was quite the year um you know not a lot of people had heard of my salesman at the time um so so we were kind of coaxing people into our booth um and uh telling them a little about about my salesman um now fast forward several years um we've done this about three years and uh uh, Jamie Cabell, who is Matt's brother-in-law, had asked us to, or asked me, say, hey, uh, would, what would you think about uh, taking over for me at my and, and kind of doing the day-to-day -day operations? So I'm like, I don't know. I, I really love my job. <laughs> uh, but it took me a while, and I was like, you know what? I think I can do that. I, I think I'm ready. Um, and so that was 2017. So it was already several years that had gone by that we'd gone to Fence Tech. Um, so was uh, was Matt past the uh, kitchen table at this point? He was at the kitchen table, but when and you can ask him. Maybe he, um, he's even watching. Um, he, I, he was traveling today, so I don't know if he's at a place where he can. But um, we actually, I'm I'm not sure how many customers we had at that point. Um, but a couple years before at fence tech matt actually went to fence tech with just basically the idea of my salesman like it wasn't even completely finished yet um so they're in a little booth and i i believe uh if anybody out there knows barry baker um i believe he was the first customer and barry and his wife chris are still with us today and not not only are they um great customers but they're dear friends of ours and they're just out of which talk hands is so the fence business hmm. really um kind of pushes state borders away and you really become friends with people all across the country so it's, yeah. it's pretty cool um one of the a story that we were down i think it was in orlando and uh this gentleman came up to me and he was smiling ear to ear and he's like you know had the southern draw he's like well, little one, why don't you tell me about what you got here? You know, just kind of sweet talking. And, you know, he was like, like my grandfather. And he's just telling me, will not stop, will not stop smiling. And then um, I'm like, well, do you have a fence company? He's like, oh, no, but my boy, he's the, Tony Thornton. He's the executive director of the AFA. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the uh, I met Tony's dad in 2014, um, and the apple just does not fall far from the tree with that one. Um, just the kindest, kindest men of Southern draw, just just a gentleman. So anyway, that was kind of like uh, my first jump into fence tech um, and then into my salesman. So um, in 2017, when um, I did start with my salesman at the time, we had <clears throat> we had um, lost our residential sales manager for Empire Fence. So then Matt's like, hey, can you get out there and meet with customers and sell some fence? And I'm like, sure, why not? So, um, so I was out in the fields and taking measurements and running estimates and doing my salesman. So, um, I kind of was so would you still pre fence. would you still pre qualify them at that point? oh yeah absolutely I kind of felt like that was like hey I've got I'm using my salesman this is really easy um this is like this is the best and like so, I didn't even know <laughs> I didn't even know how to you know I didn't know what I was doing I mean I, it's not rocket science but um I sure found it out in a hurry um and that's also when I actually started um, in with being involved um, with the Midwest chapter. Jamie, uh, also Matt's brother-in-law, who I took over my salesman, he was also about ready to become president of the Midwest chapter. He's like, hey, we're in this together, right? And so I'm like, okay, okay, Jamie, we're in this together. So then I started going to um, the events the Midwest chapter events and then just became getting more involved. Um, again, it was like the friendships that you make um, within the association are, are amazing. Um, there's, 
I don't know if, who's all out there watching, but I guarantee if there's anything I need, not in the fence, not fence related, I could email so many people or text or call and say, hey, I need some prayers. Um, one being at the very top is Mr. Randy Ward. Uh, I don't know how many people know Randy, but he's the president of the AFA. Um, just a kind soul. But I could say that about Barry Baker. Um, yeah, him so is Barry Baker. Wonder- that's that's the second time. I don't I don't know Barry Baker. Oh well, Cannon, you're gonna meet you're gonna meet Barry Baker next. Is he month. gonna be uh, live and in the flesh? He's gonna be live and in the flesh. Well, who is no, he? I'm, just just tell us all, because I don't I have oh, no idea. Barry? Yeah. Um, well, Barry Baker, he is he owns uh Baker Fence out of Wichita, Kansas. Um he does a lot for And he was your number one customer? He was the number customer? one customer. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and is he, he still number done, one in your heart? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> So, so my salesman, uh, did you come on like just right after the launch? Is that, is that what I understand? Or, or did you sell the first subscription? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, so, um, like the first hundred customers, Matt and Jamie actually, um, jumped, you know, into cars, planes, and Mm -hmm. they went to everybody's office and met them face to face and, um, told them about the program and stuff. So no, I definitely did not um, get the ball rolling at all with my salesman. I just kind of took over for at a good foundation with those guys got started. So when we started fencing, um, honestly, we didn't start fencing. Like Matt had an idea about my salesman. I had an idea about building fence and I had never built fence. So my background is super like unorthodox but the first thing that i decided to do i was like well if we're going to build fence somebody has to call and we have to learn how to build fence right so let's 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 make the phone ring and so like the first thing that i did we chose a name and we just chose the name of the town you know that was pretty simple so done people are going to search fence companies in jackson but the second thing i did i was like well what's the website going to look like and so I literally, I, I just started typing in, I, I was thinking of all these cities. I was like San Francisco Fence Company, uh, Houston, Texas Fence Company, Dallas Fence Company, Panama City Fence Company, all these different names, Nashville Fence Company. So I'm looking at all these different websites. I'm trying to like just steal their ideas. I'm like, all right, I like this. We'll put that, you know, whatever, whatever. And like so backwards, you know. But I remember uh, there was a company in Nashville And I got to their website and I saw this thing on there and it said, get a free quote now. I said, well, I haven't seen that yet. So I clicked on it. This is back in 2000 and I guess 2015, 2016. Uh, Does that sound like that would be a feasible thing? Yeah. I think the name of the company is KNC Fence in Nashville. Uh Is that that a customer? Okay. So (laughs) so I got on there and like, um, so I hit the little button. I was like, what is this? And then like, I saw the little map and it started in Wichita, Kansas, which I think it still starts in Wichita, Kansas. It uh, centers over the United States. Yeah. So Wichita mm-hmm. is dead center, I guess. Which is also where, where Barry Baker is. Is that right? It is. Is that his address that pops up as a default? As, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah, so this is 2016. It's the first time I see this and I'm like, well, this is cool. It looks complicated. It looks expensive, you know? And um, I don't know, through the years, I just, you know, it was, it was always in the back of my head. Like, what if we could be that company here in West Tennessee that's doing that digital stuff? Like, there's no way we can do that. Is there a way we can do that? And so now we're doing it. And I'm talking to you. And like, this is, yeah. you know, this is big to me. Uh, yeah. Um, it's amazing how such a little concept can make some so much of an impact in your day to day. Um, my sales was just a, it's a little idea. It's, you know, when Matt created it, he made it to be simple, you know, um, sorry about the dog barking in the background. What's his name? Bear. 
Bear? Hey, Bear. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> ironically, I was suckered into taking Bear home from Matt Warner and Melanie Warner. Oh, so that Matt's dog? Um, it, it was a puppy. His dog had puppies. Oh. Yeah. So he, he said he'd train them. But it's my fault that he does not listen because I let the dog sleep in my kid's bed. So Hey, so what uh, what about this guy we call Matt? What's uh what's the inside scoop on him? You probably know him better than the rest of us. Tell us something crazy, like <laughs> Matt, this is let me tell you this first. Matt is very um enthusiastic, I would say. Yes, Curtis, that's a better that's a better word. Uh he's influential, right? When he talked to us the other night, I was just like, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so I will tell you this. I took some stuff away from Matt. Um, Good. One is real simple. And you didn't see this. This was the night before when we were talking to him live. Right. And I asked him about his shirt. I said, do you always wear my salesman shirt? And he's like, no, sometimes. Sometimes I wear an Empire shirt. He said, do you want to see the rest of my wardrobe? And this joker stood up on his table. He's like, these are my khakis. And then he put his, he put his feet in the air. And he's like, check these guys out. It's shown his shoes off or whatever. But he said, um, he sat back down and, and Dan was like, man, do you always dress like that? He's like, look, uh, I didn't always do that. He said, but I know I've got to dress for the job that I want, not the job that I have. You know, I was like, damn, right. that's cool. You know? And so I'm not going to stand up and show it off or nothing. But look, I started tucking my shirt in last week. There you, there you go. <laughs> it's a baby steps. <laughs> I still wear tennis shoes and shorts, but I have a uh, tucked in shirt. And so Matt was talking oh, about. Oh, no, not shorts. Yeah, I do shorts. Yeah, I do shorts. <laughs> it's hot here. Like, really hot. Um, I like wearing jeans, too, in the winter. But, um, yeah, I'm going to wear shorts if I can. And also, Matt was telling us about Ryan Hawk. He listens to a guy right. named Ryan Hawk. It's a, uh, has a podcast on YouTube called Learning Leaders. And I think I told you this earlier, like all day long, I've been listening to Ryan Hawk <laughs> and it's cool, you know, but I want to know some other stuff about Matt. Like, tell us about a situation or something. Like, what's the most hairy situation you guys have been in? That we've been in? Yeah, I want to know, like, uh, tell me a time. Does Matt ever freak out? Oh, yes. <laughs> Matt freaks out. Does he throw tantrums? Hmm. No, I'll tell you about the freak out. So <laughs> I think it was probably spring. It was right after uh, the winter and uh, they were getting their, their pool ready to open. So they started like cleaning the pool or whatnot. There was something, something in their pool. Um, and there was a film over the top and wasn't exactly sure what it was. So he, kind of scooped it out. It was a possum who had fallen in the water over the winter and literally liquefied and its body oils went out all over. And he and he scooped it out and he threw it over the fence. This is a story he tells. And he's heaving and like throwing up the whole time. And he can't even tell that story without going, mm, mm. <laughs> So that's kind of, that's kind of a that's kind of a funny Matt Warner. So definitely ask him about that because uh, it's it's pretty funny. Um, no, you know, Matt is a very level-headed, fair person, but sometimes uh, there is there is time to get maybe just a a little hot on, under the collar. But I've always seen him be very fair, um, and sometimes I have to remind him to reel it back a little bit. Um, but that's okay. Sometimes somebody's <laughs> got to get a little bit out of shape, right? Now he seems like a really great guy and he seems like the type of guy that just has it under control naturally. And I know it's because he has a solid team around him. Um, like yourself. Hey, a couple of comments here. This is Ken Throckmorton. Do you know that guy? Uh, of course I know Ken. He says, what's How's my going, salesman? Ken? What's uh, my salesman? I imagine he's a my salesman user, yes. isn't he? Surely. Yes. Ken All is right. a my salesman user. We got another fella here you might recognize. This is Joe Evers. Of course. Of course, Joe. 
He only wears orange unless he's coaching kids baseball. That gets blue. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> How's it going, Joe? Can't wait to see you in a couple weeks. You and Sarah. Yes, I'm excited about that. And hey, I really want to get you and Sarah here together. I think yeah. that'd be awesome. Uh, so sure, Sarah, awesome. Sarah is like huge about um, pre-qualification, selling over the phone. Um, and these guys, they, they even do the contract over the phone or, or virtual, you know? Um, yeah. So just like, I don't know. They take, they take the, all the work out of it, it seems like. And that's a lot to be, uh, it's a lot to be desired for a company like ours. Well, we, we drive, I don't know, 200 miles a day, it seems like, a lot of days. Uh, well, you know, I, it's very important to get that pre-qualifying qualification, um, you know, and that's why we use my salesman. Um, we never want to hear, hey, I had no idea this fence cost that much, um, and I'm sorry about the dog. <laughs> it's fine. It's just part of it, I guess. <laughs> um, you know, we can't waste our time on on people that we could get fish. Is he coming closer? <laughs> He's running all over the house, looking out windows and doors. So there must be a dog walking by. Um, <laughs> you know, we're so busy. Like, I, how many times did we try to connect today, Cannon? You know, we had, um, I had meetings. I, you know, actually we had uh, one of our customers from Tennessee drop by. So, um, we, I definitely had to take out, take some time to take him out and show him around town a little bit. Um, but, uh, we're we're always busy and and honestly you know we can't meet somebody on site if without understanding uh, without them understanding how much that fence is going to be it's mm -hmm. just we can't do the cold calls we got to make sure that this is a qualified customer um so basically and i've told a lot of people this um when people when people are calling um and asking our you know calling our ladies in the front office saying that they need a fence quote and please send somebody out you know, we're still going to, can, can I take like 30 seconds here? Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, guys. Um, she's going to go get that dog. Uh, let me put, put it outside. So we also have Heather. Heather Howery. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you're having a good night, Heather. Uh, Heather agrees with Rachel that Tony Thornton definitely rocks. Uh, we also have Scott Jarrett here, our favorite DSI rep. Scott says he's out in the field. My salesman and Rachel have an impeccable reputation with service, and I would have to agree with that comment. Uh, then somebody says, what's up, Fence Fam? You know who that is, Rachel? My um, comments aren't loading correctly. I can't. Yeah, I can't see who's the... Uh... Oh, oh, that's fun. Chris Steele. That's my buddy, Chris. Oh, hey, Chris. Yeah. So, Chris... Um, Chris sent me a Yeti cup and I've been drinking out of it. And I even, was that yesterday, Chris, and I had his shirt on or two days ago? I was a high steel employee team member over here in West Tennessee a couple of days ago. Uh, so, Chris, thank you for the goodies that you sent up my way. And actually, look here. That's a freaking high steel pen. I don't know if you can read it. Nice. I think so, I hey, have one of those. Yeah, I love, I love, steel, like. Though. I think <laughs> I have some you some, Chris. Yeah, I. <laughs> read between the lines here. I think I have one, but not high steel. Um, so somebody else says, my salesman, uh, one of the best resources that we have utilized. That's Luke Volber. Thanks, Luke. Luke, yeah. Luke is going to be uh, at the uh, on uh, installation training um, up in Nebraska. So we're really excited to have Luke join us. So, hey, the, uh, the AFA training in Nebraska, that's a true place, right? And that's it is. only like, I mean, we're almost two weeks out. Yeah, two weeks from now, we'll be jumping on the plane, headed up to yeah, Nebraska. It's uh, coming up pretty soon. Um, we're pretty excited to be able to host on our campus. Um, you know, the Midwest chapter, we do uh, a lot to um, try to support education um, and just have have those events where we can all get together and uh, 
learn something. And, you know, it's just, it's been incredible working with our board of directors for the Midwest chapter. Um, I feel like we're, we're, we're trying to support the fence industry to the best that we can. Um, and I love the fact that we, we're going to have um, all this training in Nebraska and along with the training, uh, some, some other um, special things that Matt has uh, um, kind of cooked up for us. You know, I'm going to keep put a little teaser out there, um, but it's going to be a great time. And um <clears throat> We uh, can't wait to have everybody and all the board of, I think we're going to have about all the board of member, uh, board of directors members for the Midwest chapter at the event. Uh, of course, um, Tony Thornton, he's the executive director of the association and he's going to be teaching the uh, chain fabrication and uh, uh, welding, gate welding school. Um, so, you know, if you, you want to Did you say Tony, to Tony himself is teaching that? Yes. Yep. Wow. Tony. Yep, he's going to get the gate Bible out, and uh, he's going to be teaching that class. So there, and there's going to be a lot of opportunities. So you know, they'll be having the classroom work and the field work, but we're going to keep our fab shops open for lots of people to come in and be able just to, you know, try different welding, um, basically anytime they want. So, um, you know, we're pretty so excited. Is the is the roster is it is it is it filled up yet? Or do you guys still have space for more people? I think there's some still there's some. I have not talked to Alexa at AFA today, um, but I think there's some space, and we're going to try to create some space, um, even then some. So it kind of sounds um, like there might be a hundred plus people. Is that kind of what you guys expect? Or um, well, we got about a hundred ribeyes in New York strips. Hey, so, hey, hey, hey. So we need to keep it at that 99, 100 number is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> we'll better cut it off so Cannon can have a uh, couple couple steaks. Hey, you know what? I just, if it's ribeyes, you say ribeyes? Ribeyes and New York strip. Listen, I would be happy with just the fat. I love ribeye fat. <laughs> Do you feel me on that or am I alone? No, no, that's, that's a very flavorful, uh, very flavorful <laughs> part, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so when I get yeah. when I get a ribeye on my plate, like that's where I start. I'm start cutting that fat off, and that's my favorite part. Um, <laughs> hey, so somebody here is asking, and this this may be kind of direct. Uh, can you tell me about the cost? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, my uh, yeah, so this is Jonathan my salesman, Royal. Pardon me. Oh, okay. Jonathan. So Royal. My, Jonathan. So my salesman is one twenty five a month. That's it. It's subscription cost, so no contracts. Pretty much the cost of if you go out on a tire kicker and you don't make a sale. Yep. So you know, what does that mean to you as far as time? Like, really, can in our industry, how precious is your time? Like, so can you put can you put a dollar amount on your time? Yeah. So at the end of the day, like, it's the only resource that we have that we cannot regenerate. You know, if 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 we lose a team member, we can hire another one and we will. Uh, if we, you know, have a material shortage, like we can fix that. If we if a truck blows up, we can fix that. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we can replace here. But time is the only thing that we have a finite amount of. And so it's everything. And so 125, uh, you know, we've we've experimented here with like charging people for an estimate. OK, like fifty dollars. But the reality of that is fifty dollars doesn't even cover the true cost, you know. Right. So, you know, we're talking about one twenty five for a month and and um Jonathan, is that his name? Yeah, Jonathan, sorry. Uh, at the end of the day, uh what Rachel's gonna do is they're gonna set you up on a subscription and it's gonna draft out automatically, and chances are you're not even gonna know, you know, you're not gonna miss that one twenty five. Um and you're also not going to miss not having a tool to give people an idea without calling you. You know, you'll wake up in the morning time, you'll check your inbox and there will be estimates already completed that you had nothing to do with. You know, it just happens. Uh, right. And and Rachel, I think she remembers the when I first signed up, we've been with my salesman since like September, I would say. Um, so not as long as a lot of people, but the very first day. Um, well, Rachel onboarded us. It's probably about 
two o'clock in the afternoon. We sat at the kitchen table, virtual. Uh, Kristen and I, we sat here, we got on boarded, we got everything set up. And um, I, I remember asking, I was like, hey, Rachel, how long does it take to get all this stuff done? You know, oh, it's not long, maybe a couple of days, you know, you'll have all your information in. Well, we hung, we hung up with Rachel. Uh, it's probably 3 30 in the afternoon at this point. And I remember I set up to one o'clock in the morning and I literally went through the entire catalog of fence options was inputting prices, you know, charge this much, charge that much. Like I had no idea what I was doing. I was just, Hey, I want them all turned on immediately. Um, and then like, I worked really hard because, because we got, we get to upload your picture at the end of it. So when people are on there, they can see their salespeople. Um, but the pixel size is weird. Is what's it like a 10 by 10, Rachel? 80 by, <clears throat> 80, 80, by 80. 80. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I had to Google like what's 80 by 80 mean. And like, I had to figure out that. But anyways, I stayed up to one o'clock in the morning getting this thing set up. Cause I couldn't wait to do it. And I think it was like, I could probably find the message, but like at nine 30 the next morning, I think I, I text Rachel and I was like, Hey, I just sold my first chain link job off this. And then like later the same day, by the end of the day, we had sold another job off of my salesman. Now we were aggressive, you know, like, you know, it, we've kind of gotten more lax on it since, but I wanted to prove that this thing worked. And, uh, we actually sold those two jobs at really good margins, you know? Um, so, Hey, the proof is in the pudding. It works. Uh, we sold two jobs off of it within 24 hours. Uh, and how easy is it for you to set up Canon? Oh, super easy. Yeah. So you, you go through on the back end, and, you know, you sign up and you'll have a portal, right? You go in and uh, you start selecting the style of fences that you do. You know, the fences that I do may be different from the fences you do, uh, but you're going to see a lot of the just the common stuff. Six foot cedar dog gear, six foot board on board, cap and trim, like all kinds of different fences, mm. you know. And you just go through there. Probably give them, you probably give your um, customers more option than most people. I always try to say, keep it simple. Don't don't give them too many too many options. So that was a learning curve, and I will say, uh, <clears throat> there's a learning curve to get it uh, honed in, I guess, if you will, um, because the formulas, like, it makes sense the way it works. Um, it, it wants it wants you to input like a base price. Uh, then you can range it by percentages. Mm -hmm. If I'm saying too much, just tell me to shut up and I will. No, you're, uh, you're fine. Nope. <laughs> so you can range it by percentages. You can also add if the fence is under a certain size, you can uh, subtract if the fence is over a certain size, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And for a, you know, a relatively dumb fence guy like myself, like that's not how I price fences. So I'm looking at this stuff. I'm like, Hmm, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, uh, you know, so I'm trying to figure out how to make it spit it out. But at the end of the day, like if, 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 you know, you don't have to price your fences by the foot. And that's, a, that's one of the things that I was hesitant about was like, well, we don't sell our fences by the foot, Rachel. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Right. So it doesn't matter. Like, you, you know, I don't do mine by the foot and I'm sure, uh, Rachel, Matt, Empire, they don't do stuff by the foot. Right. But no, you have about an average. I mean, you have you, an you average. Know how we want. Yep. Yeah. Sell a hundred of them, to however you want to sell them. Add them all up and divide them by however many it was, and boom, you have an average, you know. Um, and 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 that average may have a lot of large jobs in it, may have a lot of small jobs in it, you know. And you might get somebody that comes in and they want fifteen foot of fence. Well, hey, yeah, it's gonna be hard to guesstimate that, you know. Yeah, um, no, but, absolutely. But you know, at the end of the day, I mean, we want to help everybody we can. But are we just are we gonna lose sleep over a fifteen foot fence? Probably not, you know. So. And, and, um, and you know what, Shannon, so a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, they, I think they put a little, little too much stock in, oh my gosh, you know, well, you know, what if I have this extra terminal and this extra terminal and blah, blah, blah. Now, what we have to remember is that the, my salesman, that's just the lead qualifying tool. You know, we're not trying to give the customer, you know, something that they can sign their name and, um, you know, invoice them right away. We just want to make sure that this customer you know, uh, understand it's going to be a $6,000 fence. You know, this is an investment for your property and it's not sure. something that you're going to go to a big box store and, you know, throw some, throw some change down on the counter and, and walk away with a quality product made by uh, quality installers. So, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and so a lot of people, I think they sell themselves a little short sometimes, you know, um, 
Um, we have that price range in there for a reason. You know, we typically, I, and I, this is how I some train contractors to, you know, we actually go below our dollar amount just a little bit um, for that budget range, maybe like a negative two or negative three. So, um, and then maybe like a plus 15% above or, you know, right now when everybody needs a fence, you know, sometimes we actually have to step on the brake a little bit. So we actually bump that up a little bit more, 20, mm -hmm. 25%, you know, um, kind of just depends on what our workflow is like. You know, if we're start, if our backlog is starting to um, get a little bit out of control, man, that's a little uh, red light that we can say, hey, we need to raise our prices just a little bit. If we sell those jobs uh, at a little higher margin, then we're going to probably find a place on our work in progress for that job. Um, but if we lose it because we're a little overpriced, well, then, you know, we're, bit, mm -hmm. we're way too busy anyway. So, um, <clears throat> And we, I would say, we, go ahead. You know, we don't want to chase every single lead, but we do want to uh, grab onto the best ones. Yeah, so, and that's the reality of the situation. As somebody asked me here, uh, Cannon, about how many jobs do you sell through my salesman monthly? Honestly, I, I don't know. Um, we're not selling two a day. Like, let's be realistic, you know. Um, that was the first day. Uh, it was hot. I think I threw out like a Facebook ad, maybe. I don't know how we did that, but it happened, you know. Um, but I can tell you this, like every single day, um, and, and we're uh, we're a smaller fence company, right? But I would say every day, you know, we get two, you know, I can, I can almost depend on it. Like, hey, at least two people will get on the platform and they will do, um, they will use the, the My Salesman program and we'll get their information. Uh, but a lot of it, um, a lot of that, when it comes to actually selling the job, um, they're they're getting their price. Um, you're getting their information. I will tell you this: very few of those, those people are going to going to follow up with you. Like they're not going to call you. They're not going to email you. Like, hey, I did this on your website. You know, uh, can we move forward on this? They are waiting for you to call them. Um, and I, so I would say if you really want the program to work for you, you have to put it out there, you have to monitor it and you have to be diligent in your follow-ups. Um, yeah, so absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and that's, so I, I clarify a lot of times, um, when people are like, Hey, is this like a, how many leads am I going to get from this? And I'm like, Oh, 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 no, 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 no. I'm sorry. That's the wrong idea. This is not a lead generator. We are, we are not trying to generate you leads. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. What we're doing is whatever you are using for your marketing, um, mm -hmm. you know, your advertising, those folks that are calling your phone already, we would like to, you know, to uh, filter them and funnel them down to use the program. So that's what I, I think I got a little um, off subject, but when people do call our company, We'll take that information, but we let them know, hey, a part of our process is for you to click on this instant online quote button, which is located on our website, or I can email it directly to you. Mm -hmm. So this way, we're making sure that all of our information is correct. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've um, got on the phone with a customer and I can't even understand their first name, let alone how to spell it, make yes. sure all of that's correct. So, and I let them, I let the customer know, hey, you know, we just want to make sure we have everything correct. If you can click on this, enter in our, your information, but you're also going to be able to pull up your house, put exactly where you're, you want your fence, and um, look at all the, a couple different selections of fence that we have to offer. And uh, once you keep hitting that next button until you get to the end of the program, it's going to generate an email for you, and it's going to go right into our system and right into our sales team program, you know, uh, reports page. So we can call you and discuss your, your project and, and how we're going to move forward. And if it's a good fit for both you and us. I love that. I love that so much. Um, that just blew my mind, Rachel. So we've been telling people here, like, Hey, this is what I need you to do. And we get pushback. I mean, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm not downing the program, you know, and I think we talked about this earlier. A lot of it has to do with presentation. A lot of it has to do with the 
how we communicate it. Absolutely. All about the presentation. I tell you one thing. If, if somebody called our office and um, they're calling somebody in our, you know, we're a big part of our community. You know, we do a lot for our community. Um, we care about our community. Um, in fact, our community wanted Matt to run for mayor. <laughs> so, um, but we, they're calling us. We're people. You know, we're what makes the company who we are. And I never want anybody to think that I'm pushing them off on technology. Like, I don't have time for to talk to you on the phone or send somebody out. I don't want anybody to ever think that. So um, I let them know that this is the next process. And if for any reason whatsoever they're hesitant, then you know what? I'm going to click on our own link. I'm going to take your information on the phone. I'm going to put it in the program. You know, hey, you know, Mrs. Jones. You want one gate, two gate, is that a single or a double? And I'll draw out that fence or one of um, one of our, our team members and at Empire will, will draw it out and let them know, hey, this is gonna be the range of three to four thousand dollars. Is is that something that you'd like to meet Henry and, and come out and verify these measurements and, and, and move forward on this project? Or is that something that maybe you want to uh, hold off on and, and, and let us know? And so we will always we will always help that customer we're never gonna like just let them go we're taking their information um and getting it down on paper first if not if we're not directly putting into our system sure. so um we don't ever want anybody to feel discouraged i guess um i was we were in the dairy queen business as growing up my grandparents had dairy queens my parents had dairy queens and i guess i was taught customer service at a very young age, you know, um, my dad would always hang this little sign, like, you know, kill him with kindness, even if it hurts, you know, there's a little picture of somebody stepping on somebody's <laughs> toe and they're smiling anyway. Um, so I guess I just feel like, you know, offer customer service. This is not a way to push anything off. Um, this is just a tool that is going to help our customers and help our teammates move faster through the process because I guarantee if somebody calls Empire Fence Friday, maybe they're a little, maybe they call a little late, you know, maybe it's 5.03 and they call and uh, maybe we're gone for the day. Um, actually, it does ring for the desk to Melanie's office. So we actually answer the phone all time. Um, but our outgoing voicemail is, hey, sorry, we missed your call. Please go to our website and click on our instant online quote button. We will uh, get back to you um, just as soon as we can to discuss your project. So now if somebody calls another fence company and they leave a voicemail, well, then come Monday morning, me in the office, I'm getting the voicemail. Oh, I got to call this customer. I'm playing phone tag for a couple days. And then maybe Wednesday, I finally talk to them and we schedule something to come out Friday. In my, in my first scenario, I'm giving my customers some budgetary information on Friday, immediately, right away. Wow. Did I jump off subject a little bit? Did I no, <laughs> digress no. a little bit? So look, part part of this part of this whole deal, uh, Rachel, is that we do this to learn. And so like I'm that's just like my silence is just me soaking it all up, like the last little drop. And, you know, I think I would say here we're probably presenting the uh, the process not as uh, cleanly or as appropriately as we could. Um, so, yeah, I'm just I think it's cool. And I would imagine, you know, when you guys present that over the phone, uh, this is the next step. Click on this link. Uh, I would imagine you probably get some that are filled out and there's no map. Is that right? So that there's no map. Yeah, they didn't draw it out. Oh, like if they just stop on the program. Mm -hmm. like they didn't mm -hmm. advance right oh yeah once in a while we do you know so with my salesman when the customer is all the way through their program and and i and maybe that's my teaching background or maybe it's just because i'm a mom and maybe a little bossy i don't i'm not exactly sure which one but i kind of spoon feed the customer you know using the program i'm like hey you know just you know you can click to start click to stop to make the segments of your fun be sure to hit that next button until you see um, Henry and Darren's cute little face. Oh. I probably call um, cute little face. So I kind of, I, I push him to the end. You know, I'm like, hey, keep hitting next until you get to the end. 
But there are some people who if they go on organically and maybe for some reason they drop out of the program, we actually are still collecting all their information. So we have our report page, those folks that go all the way through and we get a generated email that goes to them and to us just as a notification. Um, but we have these really cool reports on the back end um, that we can pull up all the information, pull a printable page of their drawing and everything. Um, but we also have what we call a drop-off report. So if I have somebody that went on and maybe they just put their name in, didn't draw anything or didn't do anything else, um, as long as they have their, you know, put their contact information, I could call them up and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, it looks like you're using our online estimating tool and didn't get quite through. What can I help you with? I am here to help you. I love it. Um, so, hey, there's a few people here that saying sure. we have a TV behind our desk in our office mm -hmm. and do it for a customer when they walk in. I think I saw that at Ken. That might be Ken saying that. Um, seemed like he had a had, oh. had a little monitor set up there. Uh, Perfect. Yes. Ken's sure, got a sure. Ken's got a great new uh, showroom and office yeah. and facility. It's beautiful. Yeah, Ken. Yeah, Ken is living it up over there. Hey, I would I would have been to Ken's grand opening, but I had a new grandbaby, so otherwise I would have been there. Hey, congrats on that! So, so your grandbaby is very how how old did you tell me earlier? Um, she'll be six weeks tomorrow. Six weeks. Yeah. Well, congrats. Thank you. Uh, Rachel is a grandmama and a ball mama. She was at ball practice last night or ball games I'm always, last night. I'm at I'm always at baseball practice or games. So she's always on the go. Um, <laughs> hey, somebody here. This is what I want to pull up. Um, where is it at? Did you see? Somebody asked about the new addition to my salesman. Did you see that? Um, there we go. That... Maybe. <clears throat> okay. Anything new? Is there anything new on the horizon with my salesman? Well. There's always something new on the horizon with my salesman. And I say that because we're working in the industry just like everybody else. And, you know, we would like to stay up on things and uh, create, you know, some pretty cool things. And, and we do have some pretty cool things in the works. Um, I I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Matt may let, let some things out of the bag, but he's premature about letting things out of the bag. I like to let it like uh, simmer just a little bit. Um, there, there's a. I'll let you, I'll uh, I'll give you one little one little nugget um, right away. Um, and some of this, um, most oftentimes, as as many of you know, you know, we have been going through versions with my salesman. So it looks a little bit different from, from when we first came out of things. Um, we, we put, we put a lot into, um, coding our program and, and doing kind of the latest and greatest, um, and at, um, as things go along, um, we do have some opportunities that might are like a, uh, an advertising platform for contractors to use to their, um, uh, for who's ever using their my salesman, um, we're kind of beta testing that right now. Um, that will be just a slight, a slight charge if you want to use some of that functionality. Um, but if you wanted to take a look at it, you we are beta testing it at empire-bents.com. So if you wanted to just run through um, our platform or even our, um, if you go to our demo, there's some ad space on our demo on. Um, if you go to mysalesman.com and click on the demo, just run through the demo, and there's some advertisement for our for the AFA FIS training. So you can kind of see what that is going to look like, and that's something new coming up the pipeline. Um, got a couple of other things coming up the pipeline, um, but they're I'm, I'm not ready to spill the beans yet. So hopefully, in, uh, in a couple weeks. I'll be ready to spill the beans about that. So just a little teaser. Just a little. So I think we'll have you back. Uh, and maybe you and Matt together. I think that would be appropriate. I think we would. Okay. everybody would enjoy that. Um, and maybe we can release some cool information. So this is Josh Glover. Josh is here tonight. Um, hey, Josh. We'll see yeah. Josh in a couple weeks. 
Yeah, for sure. It cuts off some of his comment, but he says we're currently making changes to our website to funnel traffic to my salesman, then to our financing page after they get a price. Pretty excited about that. Yeah, that's that's great. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's just the next step in the process. Now we have a price and our we have financing yep. on our page, and that's always a maybe I need an IT guy to connect the two of them. Uh, or maybe you and Matt Warner should figure something out to make that happen. <laughs> um, well, you, you know, you can, so everybody who's using my salesman right now, you have a custom confirmation email text on your, my business page. So you could put, um, anything that you want your customers to know in that, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. say, Hey, yep. we're currently such and such timeout. Um, right. but if you put emails or links in just to those sections, they become clickable on the email. So if you drop a finance link on there, they're going to be getting that information. Hey, click on our finance link below. And, you know, yeah. so whatever verbiage you want to use, you can, your uh, clickable finance link will be on that email that the customer sees. So That's just remember idea. if you do, if you do have financing and you have a specific link for it, yes. drop it in your, my, my uh, salesman custom confirmation email text box, on your my business page don't forget to save it okay some people will call me and say hey i i'm trying to put a new salesperson in and it just wants won't stay so i'm like did you save it and that's the problem <laughs> so it wasn't saving they didn't hit the save button so kind of hard to before. see just scroll yeah. to the bottom right hit that save button anytime you make a change like a little yellow orange button down there yep. um so this is another comment here um mm -hmm. this is from ryan bohannon he says is my salesman created just for residential jobs so yeah it was created for residential jobs um you know obviously it's got a cool drawing tool when you're mm -hmm. when you pull that out you know even if you know like say Say for instance, um, we have some construction companies around us that uh, if they know know how much, uh, if if they want to just measure out how how uh, how much fence they're going to need, like maybe for some temp fence or whatnot, they they know they can use that measuring tool. So you know, um, a it's geared for residential fencing, but you know, darn it, we can find a workaround for any any way to use the uh, things to uh, our betterment, right? So. Hey, if nothing else, like we've learned here that you don't just have to use it like exactly the way it is. Like, well, I've used it before just yeah. to measure stuff out, you know, yeah. um, like maybe it's a custom fence or just, you know, a commercial job that, you know, it's not going to you don't want to price it out that way, you know, but you can absolutely uh, just pull the map up, type the address in and measure off what you want to and you can also do that on on google google maps right but like the problem there is it doesn't continue um the uh the counting you know so you can measure right. one runner fence it might be 50 foot and then as right. you go down it's gonna add you know whatever that is and so yep. if you use google maps a lot of times you'll have to click write it down then draw a whole separate line write it down and draw a host one of the benefits of my salesman is it's going to keep a tally. It'll say this is 17, this is 79, this is 84, right. you know. So uh, right. we, yeah, there's we some, use it. There's so many, so much functionality that when you use it, you're like, you know, you just keep reinventing. Oh, I do this or, I, you know, I've tried that. This works pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, no, you, you definitely, definitely uh, use it in all different kinds of ways. Yep. Um, and we, we constantly kind of keep a throttle. I don't, I don't know how healthy it is to like get in, get in the, uh, the back end and, you know, tinker with prices. But, um, I think the only way to know, like on my end, I, I don't know how you tell people to set it up. So I set it up the way that I feel is comfortable, but every now and then we'll get a stray hair comes through, you know, and I'll see what the tool quoted. And then I compare it to like how we actually figure the job, you know, and I'm like, Oh, something's wrong here. You know, something wrong with the five foot black chain link, you know? Um, and so I don't know me personally, like that's how I monitor the system. Like I don't, I don't know. I set it up to what I think it needs to be. Uh, right. Um, and we run it, I guess that way until we catch a red flag and then we go in and look at it. Uh, I don't know if you have any advice around that. Like how, how often should you monitor it? And with prices as, as, as fluid as they are, 
you know, maybe, maybe the recommendation is to just to have a larger percentage range to protect yourself. Right. Um, so, you know, definitely there's human error. If you drop in a $300 gate and you actually add another zero, you know, <laughs> $3,000 gate, um, yeah. that's not good. So, you know, um, and I think that also stems from the keep it simple. Let's put our basic um, disciplines in, you know, put some base pricing in there and, um, you know, definitely month, make sure uh, you look over what you save. You don't want to put in, um, like I said, a $3,000 gate for a $300 gate. So I've seen that happen. Um, I've gotten calls and said, I don't know why this estimate is this, this way. Can you please help me? And generally I can, I've done this a lot now. I can, I can generally troubleshoot and, and find out what the, what the deal is. So, um, That's right. but, um, another thing we've all experienced the price increase with material and our vendors, um, going up. So, and I honestly, um, some of the, fence, uh, our, our sales guys, I, I don't think they actually have gone in and changed the pricing. I think they just raised the budget range. Yeah. Uh, so this is another comment. It says, is there any way that my salesman could generate a materials list? Okay. So my salesman does not generate a material list, but we actually have two different programs. We have my salesman, which is the lead qualifying tool. It's the front end. Your main user is your customers. Um, we have another program called my estimator. My estimator will produce a proposal with terms and conditions for the customer it will generate a material list and installer work order as well. Hmm. That's awesome. So is that a, uh, is that about the same price range as the my salesman? It's the same price as my salesman. However, if you are my salesman customer and you want to add my estimator instead of paying um, full price for a second uh, program, my estimator is five hundred dollars, and then we just charge a, a monthly subscription of fifty dollars a month for that. So that's probably the one uh, that people aren't as familiar with, right? Right. Um, is there a demo for that somewhere? Um, there's not a there's not a demo. I need to make one. Um, generally speaking, I will do an online meeting and run through that program uh, upon request. Can we request it? We get. <laughs> Is it too much? Is it too much? It's some pushes over eight o'clock. I'm sorry. I want to see it though. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think that's all the comments. Well, Rachel, thank you so much uh, for jumping in here with us and filling Dan's big shoes tonight. <laughs> I don't think any can, anybody can fill Dan larger than life personality. Yeah, I wish you would have had a crown. That would have made it complete. Oh, shoot. I, you know, my daughter was a competitive dancer. I probably have a crown somewhere. <laughs> well, no. Hey, Rachel, thank you for coming on. And, and everybody, uh, Vince fam, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the questions. Um, I would like to announce uh, Dan is, is so extra. You guys know this, right? Uh, but he's got us a, 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 he called it a splash page. Okay. It's a website. Uh, but anyways, check it out. It's uh, www.myfencelife.com. Uh, we've got some uh, pretty cool information in there, and I think it'll only grow. But anyways, uh, go check it out so we can get those clicks up. And um, while you're there, click on our logo and take it to YouTube. And at YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Hey, Cannon, can I just yep. uh, interject one, one more thing? Hey, if yes. anybody, if any one of your viewers um, would like more information on my salesman, um, please. Uh, feel free to give me a call, send me an email. Um, if you want to get started with my salesman, it's super easy. You go to mysalesman.com, you mm -hmm. click on the sign up button in the upper right hand corner. It's going to ask you some company information, um, some credit card information for payment. It gets in, it gets right to my inbox. It literally takes me about 15 to 20 minutes to get you set up or you're going to get a user ID. I'm going to probably do as much as I can for you before you even log in. So you might be ready to start using your unique link in about one to two hours. You'll be ready to go. Um, not much time. I will do an online meeting with you and walk you through. I don't 
ever want anybody just to sign up and say, oh, good luck, you know. Um, why try to reinvent the wheel? We've done this a long time. I'll, I'll give you all I got. So it, it becomes very, very easy for you to navigate. So, so uh, yeah, guys, I will tag Rachel into this video. So if you would like to reach out to her for more information, uh, she'll be easy to find. Um, I, I think I'm pretty safe to say that, hey, she'll answer pretty fast. That's how she treated us. Um, so, yeah, it's worth it, guys. My salesman, uh, Rachel, thank you again for taking time out of your busy day. Yours. Uh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, Cannon. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Thank you. Hey, guys, have a great night. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.